DIEU has an elaborate life cycle and follows certain steps to render an application. We can hook into this process and execute our own code during one of these phases. The life cycle can be broken down into four phases. The creation phase before the app has fully initialized. The mounting phase when the content is rendered in the browser. The updating phase when data changes. And the unmounting phase when the app is unmounted from the DOM. These phases each have two predefined options that we can use in the config object. Each option requires a function as its value. We can use the ES6 shorthand and specify the option as a function. In these options, we specify the code we want to execute for each step in the lifecycle process. Let's go through the lifecycle and the order in which the hooks are invoked. The lifecycle starts in the main.js file when we create a new view app with the create app method. From there, it goes into the phases. In the creation phase, the first step view reaches is the before create step. This step uses the before create lifecycle hook that will be invoked before the app has fully initialized. To demonstrate, let's start by adding the before create hook to our example. Inside it, we'll change the data properties value and log it to the console. If we run the example in the browser, nothing shows on the page. That's because, at this point, Vue is just aware of the app configuration, and things like data properties, computed properties, methods, watchers, etc. If we take a look in the console, we see that message actually has the new value we gave it. So, Vue is aware of message, and even that we changed it. But, it hasn't compiled the template block yet. So even if we add a value to message, we won't see anything on the screen. The second step in the creation phase is the created step. This step uses the created lifecycle hook. The hook method will be invoked after the app has fully initialized. This is the time that view will compile the template. For example, all the string interpolations are replaced with the concrete values that should be shown to the user. To demonstrate, let's change before create to created in our example. This time, the text shows in the browser. The created hook is a good place to make API calls. For example, we can check if a user is logged in and fetch their details to personalize their experience. After the template has been compiled, we reach the before mount step. This step uses the before mount lifecycle hook and is invoked right before view renders our content in the browser. To demonstrate, let's add the before mount hook to our config object and change message to have a new value again. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the text is now hello world. If we open the browser's console, we can see the text was first changed to hello in the created method but then changed to hello world before it was rendered to the page. The second step in the mounting phase is the mounted step. This step uses the mounted lifecycle hook and is invoked when view renders our content in the browser. At this point, our app is shown to the user. The DOM is also now ready for access and manipulation, so the user can start interacting with our app. When they do, a new lifecycle phase will trigger. The mounted hook counts as an update. If we change the text, it will trigger the updating phase. To demonstrate, let's add the mounted method to our example and change the text back to hello. We'll also add two more hook methods called before update and updated with a console log in each. If we take a look in the browser, we'll see that message changed back to hello. But, in the console, we'll also see the two logs that state that the update phase has been triggered. When a user starts changing data, we reach the before update step. 
This step uses the before update lifecycle hook and is invoked after the data changes, but before the DOM is patched. In other words, before we see the update on the page. To demonstrate, let's add a button to the template block that changes message to hello. We'll also remove all the other hooks. If we click the button in the browser, the message shows hello world, even though we specified hello on the button. What happened is that message changed to hello, but before that change could be written to the DOM, the before update method changed the value to hello world. The before update step is a good place to remove event listeners that are no longer needed. After the updates processed, we reach the updated step. This step uses the update lifecycle hook and is invoked when the update has been processed. In other words, when we see the update on the page. It should be noted that the template doesn't unmount when the user changes data. It's only a re-render, so there's no mounting or unmounting phase. Sometimes, we may need to remove our app, for whatever reason, from the page. That's when we reach the before unmount step. This step uses the before unmount lifecycle hook and is invoked right before the app is unmounted. In other words, before we stop seeing the app in the browser. At this point, the app is still fully functional. We can perform any necessary cleanup, like canceling network requests or invalidating timers. After the app has been unmounted, we reach the unmounted step. This step uses the unmounted lifecycle hook and is invoked when the update has been processed. In other words, when we stop seeing the app in the browser. We've discussed the view instance lifecycle throughout the lesson. But, it's not really the application's lifecycle, it's the root app components one. All the components in our application has a lifecycle. For example, let's say we have a nested child component that we show, or don't show, based on a button click. Once we click the button to show the nested child component, it will go through the creation and mounting lifecycle phases. If there's something inside it that causes a change in data, it will go through the updating lifecycle phase. And if we click the button to hide it, it will go through the unmounting phase. As a demonstration, we have a new component called childhooks.view. Inside it, we have hooks for the creation, mounting, and unmounting phases, with a console log for each. The console logs are prefixed with the word child to help us identify which component is affected. In the root app component, we import and use the new component on a toggle button. We also have hooks for the creation, mounting, and updating phases with a console log for each. The console logs are prefixed with the word parent to help us identify which component is affected. Without clicking the button, we'll see the before create, created, before mount, and mounted hooks for the parent. So the root app component was created and mounted, as we expect. If we click on the button, the child component shows, and it adds new logs. The button click causes an update on the parent component, so the before update hook is called. In this step, view will create and mount the child component. Once the child is mounted, the parent is ready to add it to the DOM with its updated hook. If we click the button again, the child component isn't shown anymore and new logs are added. The button click invokes the before update hook again. But this time, the child component's unmounting phase triggers. Once the child is unmounted, the parent is ready to remove it from the DOM in its updated hook. In the next video, We'll learn how to access DOM nodes directly from within view and use lifecycle methods to manipulate it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.